welcome to the Fighting Falcon Military Museum. How may I help you? The museum has been in this building for almost 20 years. It began in 2004. The project to restore a glider began in the early 1990s when it was suggested, well, we're coming up to the 50th anniversary of D-Day, is anything going to be done to celebrate the story of the Fighting Falcon Museum, I have Fighting Falcon glider. And because a lot of people, in 50 years had passed, a lot of people didn't know the story of the Fighting Falcon. And there were still enough uh, World War II veterans and workers who had built gliders in 1943 that they volunteered their time and effort to actually restore a glider. They had to find parts, of course, and fortunately, several of the gliders had been sold for surplus and farmers had left you know, maybe a wing or part of the fuselage out in their barn. So they gathered up all of these pieces and started restoring a glider. And um, eventually it took a number of years because this was all done by volunteers. Very little money was spent on this project. And they eventually did put a glider together from odds and ends. Now the glider we have does not have wings on it. This room could not be built large enough to put the wings on, but as we tell our visitors, if you want to visit the wings, they're on the glider at the Air Zoo in Kalamazoo. <laughs> the Air Zoo said, well, fine, we'll, we'll use those wings. Our contract began in 1942, and uh, Greenville Gibson Refrigerator was a refrigerator company. They made ice boxes and electric refrigerators. So they had to convert production over and train employees to build these gliders. And they did it in less than six months, which was, I thought, pretty amazing that they, they went from producing refrigerators to producing these gliders. And there were a lot of subcontractors. Uh, uh, in Grand Rapids, the furniture makers contributed lumber and uh, the wing structures were actually built in Grand Rapids and the main fuselages were built here in Greenville. Um, well, they, they used them in several other missions. They were used in Sicily, uh, was the first time they used the gliders, and that didn't go too well. They released the gliders too early and a lot of them dropped into the ocean because, you know, they have, you know, they're, they're not a power airplane, they're, you know, a glider, and if they, they need a certain amount of space to land, <laughs> But uh, then they were used in the uh, Pacific Theater as well and used to build, move building materials around so they could construct uh, air bases. But uh, yeah, D-Day was going to be the big show for the gliders, that they would be used to bring in elements of the 82nd Airborne and the 101st Airborne. You know, this is a restoration. Uh, of the Fighting Falcon. The original Fighting Falcon, because it was celebrated, it was officially named the Fighting Falcon, uh, was chosen to be the number one glider uh, on D-Day, and they were going to land behind Utah Beach and bring in uh, the general in charge, uh, the assistant general of the 101st Airborne. Unfortunately, they were landing in the dark and it was rainy and the pilot was unable to stop the glider where he wanted to. It slid across the field and crashed into a tree. And the impact was such the general was killed instantly. Full bar. Full bar. So the original Fighting Falcon never made it past D-Day. The students here in Greenville, when they heard about the production of gliders, said, well, let's, let's raise money and buy a glider. And so they sold war bonds and they raised over $70,000 in two months, which was a whole lot of money in 1943. 
and they bought four gliders actually with their $70,000 and the Army saw this as a good opportunity to you know to celebrate Greenville and sell more war bonds so they did a demonstration and it was called Glider Day and it occurred on May 19, 1943. Uh, in the beginning we tended to focus more on World War II but over time, we've uh, added World War I memorabilia, Civil War, Korean conflict, Vietnam, modern conflicts. So we, we cover it all here. And he used his cigarettes. He would trade for stuff. And he came back with this amazing collection of, of medals and Germans. daggers. He opened from 2 to 4.30 on Sunday afternoons but we do private tours. You know, if people can't visit during those hours, they can call us and, and we can arrange to have a docent here open up the museum so they can be shown around. This museum is entirely funded by donations. We don't accept uh, money from the city or the state. Uh, it's all donations that support it. And, one of the ways we raise money is by having a golf outing every summer and, and it'll be held July 9th this year.